What's going on, family? Welcome back to another video. Today, we're going to be making some easy, super easy baked pork neck bones, all right? So before you get started, I want to let you know what some things you're going to need, all right? So first, you're going to need some neck bones, of course. Um, an onion, a bell pepper, some garlic, uh, your favorite meat seasonings, all right? You're going to need uh, maybe like three, four cups of water, aluminum foil, a roasting pan, uh, and a sharp knife, all right? Uh, and maybe about five lemons. So uh, what you're going to do first, of course, is wash the meat. You're going to need to clean your meat off, all right? You got to clean the meat. You got to eat clean meat, all right? This stuff comes from the processing plant, and they have their own processes there, their own steps that they take, but you got to do your own stuff at home. You got to get this stuff nice and clean prepared for your family and your friends, all right? So what you see me doing here, we're going ahead and cutting off those, those fatty pieces of uh, veins and, and artery pieces and all that craziness that's on there. You want to cut out all that stuff off, all right? And just set it to, and throw it away. So that's what you see me doing here. So on these big pieces, uh, and I'm sure if you've, if you've ever bought a pack of neck bones, um, here I got maybe like two, two uh, or maybe even three uh, for me and my family this evening. But if you've ever bought a pack of neck bones, you know these things really don't come uh, squeaky clean from the from the store so you want to make sure that you do that part yourself and the way I like to clean these meats is um, is lemon that's my that's my go-to if I don't have lemon I got some vinegar um, and I hear some folks even use just this regular old salt water and scrub them real good and let them sit for a little bit in the salt water and rinse it off but I like to wash them with lemon let them sit in some lemon water and then rinse them off with some fresh clean water but all those little bits and pieces that you don't want to eat, the stuff that looks crazy, that it's not just meat and bone. Of course, you want to leave some fat on there because um, that's, you know, fat is flavor, of course. But uh, some of the crazy stuff like what you see here, those big, thick, fatty pieces, you want to cut all that stuff off. All right, so we got the, the initial trimming and stuff done. So now uh, you see all that craziness that I pulled off, all that nasty stuff that you don't want to eat. I pulled all that stuff off, cut it off. So now I'm going to take these lemons that I have, not all of them, just a couple, uh, slice them up. Let's give these uh, these neck bones a quick rub um, just to get down inside of the bones, down along the sides of the fat and the meat and stuff like that. Let's give them a good, quick little uh, uh, rub with the lemon. Get some of the, the lemon flavor down in there. And also, uh, the lemon will help clean some of the the, uh, the smaller pieces of, of uh, gunk and stuff off that you really can't see, but you always can feel it. If you've done any type of cooking or handling with some pork, you know that slimy feel that you have. The lemon cuts right through that and gets it all off. So I'm going to go through this pretty quick and uh, uh, rinse them with some water. And as you wash through some of these, you'll see some of the, the pink or the blood come out of the, the meat, and it'll start to, start to soak up inside the lemons. So those first few lemons that I use, I just throw them right over there into the bowl uh, with the trimmings or the, the scrap rather. And then I rinse them off again, as you see here, with some clean water, just rub them with my hands. And we're gonna fill up the sink with some fresh, clean water and uh, cut up some more lemons. And this time I'm just gonna squeeze the lemons just right on top, just squeeze the lemons in there, let the juice, the seeds, the skin, the fruit itself, all that stuff just sit in the water. Just let it soak for a little bit. Not long. I would say maybe maybe five, ten minutes or so. Just wash it. At this time, I just wash my hands. You know, just kind of get my next uh, phase of, of the dish ready. Get the oven ready. You know, uh, if I got to cut up vegetables, I do all that all that good stuff. So they've been soaking for a few minutes now. Um, I'm going to take those lemons out and uh, take out the water. You see the water a little, has a little bit of a slight pink tint to it. But now, it's, the meat you see is a lot lighter. It's still got good flavor. Good pork flavor is still there, but it's a lot cleaner. It's a lot more safer to eat as well. So, that's my cleaning process for meat in batch this size. You see how clean and nice those look? That's what you're looking for, all right? That's why you clean your meat. That's why you wash the meat for your friends and your family. So, we're going to give these a quick rinse. All right? We're going to um, space them out, let some of the water drain off. We're going to get them ready to season up and go in the oven.
All right, family. So you want to preheat your oven to 350 degrees. All right. So what we're going in with here first with is some um, beef nor. This has been my my go-to lately. This uh this nor beef seasoning is amazing. All right. Then we got some body of complete. Body brand seasonings are are a must in the kitchen. I love the flavor they have. It's, it's it seems like it's pretty organic and pretty pretty good uh, well made uh, quality seasoning. And then we got some Stubbs chicken rub here. All right. I know it says chicken, but you got to be able to mix and match. You better you got to get creative in the kitchen. All right. The Stubbs chicken rub is magic. All right. We got the Kinders or Kinders prime steak. That's good on any kind of beef. It's good on pork and chicken too. It's got some got some good umami, some good mushroom flavor in there. We got smoked paprika. Got some Mrs. Dash going in. And also we got some Cajun Two-Step, some all-purpose Cajun Two-Step. This stuff is pretty good. This is a, a new season that I'm trying out here in the kitchen on some of my recipes. And so far the family likes it, my friends love it. I mean, and I kind of like it too. So Cajun Two-Step, give it a try. So once you get your seasoning on the meat, of course, you're just going to massage it in. Just give it a good toss. Massage it all in. Get it well covered all through. All in between the bone and the meat. Down in the bone. And every nook and cranny. You want to get that seasoning all mixed down in there pretty good. And don't be scared to touch your meat. Use your hands. If you want to put on gloves, you can do gloves. I got some latex gloves that I use when I barbecue. And uh, I guess if I'm in the mood, depends on what I'm cooking, I put on some gloves. But today, I feel like getting dirty. So I put my hands in there. All right, y'all, so now we're gonna go in with the vegetables. We got a little bit of onion, some green bell pepper, and garlic, all right? I got them sliced up pretty thin, kind of like how I uh, slice them up for some cabbage. But yeah, this, uh, this, uh, this uh, slice on the onion and bell pepper, however you like to cut them up, should work. And um, some minced garlic. Just throw that in on top. And what we're gonna do is just mix it all in with the meat. All right, now we got the meat seasoned up and the vegetables added in. Man, I love a good time lapse. We're gonna go in with our with our water, all right? This is about, I think three or four cups of water. I think it's maybe closer to three. You don't wanna cover it with water. I put water in there till about maybe uh, between a quarter up to maybe halfway of the meat itself. Um, you don't wanna have too much in there because this, these ox, uh, not oxtails, <laughs> these um, neck bones, they're gonna put out uh, some water on their own as they cook in the first hour when you have got them uh, wrapped, they're gonna release their own water. So you don't wanna put in too much. And before you wrap these up, keep in mind that you wanna put these neck bones in the pan with the bone facing down, all right? You want bone down. All right, so this is what we're looking like after our first hour at 350 degrees. All right, check it out. So this is what you should look like after your first hour, all right? What I do is I, I give it a quick stir with a big spoon, and I spoon some of that, uh, some of the juice and broth over top of the meat, all right? You can stir them if you want. Uh, what I mean by stir, you wanna kinda flip them, toss them around, you don't wanna break them up. You wanna keep that meat on the bone as much as possible. As you cook these things, they're gonna get real tender, so the meat's gonna come off regardless, but. I take the uh, spoon and ladle some of that juice on top just to keep the, the meat tender. And they go back in for another hour uncovered at the same temperature. 
All right, y'all. So here we are after our second hour. So you can see there's a lot more liquid that's been released, and you see the meat has gotten a, gotten a real nice, deep brown color on it. That's what you're looking for. It's nice brown, nice and tender meat. All right. So again, after the second hour, I'm just starting to spoon some of the juice that's released back on top, just to keep the, the meat tender. Kind of like how you spray your spray of meat on a barbecue grill, use a mop or whatever on the on the grill. You want to uh, do the same thing, same way you may baste a roast or baste a turkey, something like that in the oven. You want to use those juices and baste your uh, your neck bones to keep them tender. All right, family. So we got them basted up again. They're going in for their last hour. All right, and here we are after our final and third hour. You see how tender that meat looks, how nice and brown it is. And it got a nice deep red brown color on it. The spoon slices right through the neck bone like it's butter. The meat just pulls off the bone. That's crazy. Y'all see that? So you got to be patient when you cook these things. You can't go fast. You can't cook it too high. The meat is far off the bone tender. And that's what we're looking for. Let's plate it up. So here we are, getting ready to eat dinner here. Got some neck bones. I got some llama beans with okra and some cornbread here. The bone just pulls right out. That's money right there. You can't beat that. This is a good home cooked meal. You must give this recipe a try. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. See you in the next video.